All right, we are back on the Real Estate Happy Hour. Guess what? David's not here. He's cruising. I got Ken Williams, Chef Ken. How are you? Good, good. Good to be here. Man, I appreciate you coming in. Ken is a uh, uh, entrepreneur and, and professional chef here in Birmingham, and man, we're we're excited to learn a lot more about you and your business. And, uh, man, doing great things here in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, excited to talk about. It. And uh, in case everybody's wondering, Mississippi State grad, so. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Mate, we'll about see. as good as I mean, go right in par with Auburn this year. So yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, uh, we sure are glad to have you because I think one of the biggest things we're going to learn from Ken today is about. Uh, well, hey, you're looking for that dream kitchen. Hey, I think we put a lot of waste out there, and we're building these kitchens. Ken's going to tell you what a real cook <laughs> or yeah. chef, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know what to home call cook, you. personal chef, but. Home cook is what we're talking about today. So. That's right. And, you know, uh, one of the things is, especially when you knew him before, you knew he loved to cook, but now he's the real deal. So uh, we're going to be doing that. And then uh, uh, we're going to, of course, get into some real estate statistics. And the October numbers are in. Mortgage numbers are in. Interest rates keep going up, up and away, uh, as as David talked about. And Ken will uh, chime in on that because, hey, he was in real estate at one time. So uh, you know about that. And then, of course... Uh, his second favorite thing other than cooking is sports. Absolutely. So uh, I'm sure we'll get some good opinions from Ken on uh, the football picks. and uh, But we're going to uh, just get right into the happy hour. And uh, Ken, uh, tell us a little about yourself, where you're from and who you're married to so and all that. Grew up in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, went to Mississippi State and met my wife, Brooke. She's an engineer with Alabama Power. Uh, her job brought us here after college. Been here ever since nine years now. Man, so she's a uh, so she's an engineer at Alabama Power, yeah. and then y'all have one child and one on the way. That's right. That's right. Due December twenty third. So that is uh, is something. Man, man, and I tell you what, I mean, your oldest daughter uh, Adeline. Yep, almost is, three. Man, three and January. she's been around the world, hasn't she? She has. Yeah, We're, our goal for her is to have more stamps in her passport than years alive. So wow. she's ahead of that right now. She's got three. Been to Belgium, the Netherlands, and to France. So. Wow, that, that's incredible. I mean, do you realize most adults can't even say that? No. And they can't even hit no. Canada, Mexico. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's it's crazy. The yep. And I think it's great. I mean, I, I you know, we, we've talked about it before here. I mean, I think one of the best gifts you can give somebody is travel. Absolutely. Yeah. You learn that other people live way differently than you do and are perfectly happy living that way. Isn't that great? Now, yeah. I bet you, being a chef, love Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. 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 Well, I did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's still so around. Sad. Uh, yeah, so, so. it's it's crazy. Yeah. Although I think he lived a pretty rough life. Uh, oh, yeah. he had up. some. I think he had some demons. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> I think that's a. I think, that's I think he wore those demons too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So so you graduated from Mississippi State. What did you major in? Political science. Political science. Yep. Huh. Well, it's a natural. Um, it is. Yeah. Political science to real estate to the culinary school, and that's what everybody does. Right. right absolutely. And then then, uh, I I assume it was a passion. Oh yeah. The original plan when we moved to Birmingham was for me to go to culinary school, uh, but I needed a job. I needed to make some money and not be in school again. Well, and I mean, because wife is just getting started, yeah, too. Yeah, right, yeah. We had nothing, no family here, no nothing, so, yeah. And culinary school's tough, isn't it, monetarily? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't make it. You do an internship. I did an internship at Mountain Brook Club, but you don't make much money. So in other words, it's, it's fun. You might get a free meal. Yeah, yeah. That's, out of that's it. about the best you get. And then what was and your great experience? Had you cooked a lot growing up? I did. Yeah, cooked a lot. Um, cooked. I spent most of the summers with my grandmother. We were always in the kitchen doing all kinds of stuff. So yeah, cooked a lot growing up. My dad cooks a lot. So yeah. you know, one of the interesting things is you like taking interesting spins because it's not your typical. I don't want to call it meat and three southern food. Now it's mixed with that, of course, yeah. with you being from. The oh South, yeah. But oh, yeah. Talk about that. So it's it's southern food, but a little more modern, a little more upscale. Um, that's what most of my clients want. So that's yeah, what, that's you, what you know what's funny is, is I've known Ken a, a long time now, and you're an interesting dude <laughs> relative to. I mean, we can talk sports, we can talk politics, all this stuff, and I, you're one person I can't put in a in a particular <laughs> spot. Yeah, it's good. No, sports, travel, and food are the, right, the three right, right. big things. But if, even if I were to say travel and I were to say, oh, what's his favorite, I, I'm not so sure that I could really pin you down as to your favorite oh, yeah. thing to do. Yeah, no, probably not. And food's probably the not. same way, right? Absolutely, yeah. Food, anything super adventurous like that. And, and uh, going back to the training a little bit, here in Birmingham, did you go to school here in Birmingham? I did, did. Went to the Jeff State Culinary Program. Uh, it's a wonderful program. 
a about two years, depending on what you decide to do. And yeah, you do you get a lot of hands-on training. They have a restaurant there at the school uh, that is completely student-run. Worked in that for two semesters. And, yeah. Well, good, good. The Alabama Hammer. What's happening, Hammer? Mm. Uh, by the way, uh, I saw a YouTube video where your nemesis uh, uh, talked to talked about you from the stage. So that's hey, uh, maybe some flattery there. Uh, I, and I'm talking about the guy that has all the other billboards. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we all but, know. Uh, we all know him. All know him. Uh, but anyway, all right. So specialty. I know you talked a second ago. Depending on what they want to do, what does that mean? So most clients want multi-course meal. Um, usually, it's steak for the entree, but it's really just again whatever they want. Um, whatever. Now, and more particularly, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But talking about being a chef coming out of school, you, you had mentioned that. Uh, uh, you choose which route you're going to take in the school program? Oh, yeah, yeah. So there are two different routes. You can do an apprenticeship, which is a longer, it's a two or three year process. Um, you're a, you can get some certifications with doing the apprenticeship or you can do an internship. Um, it's a little faster route into a kitchen and it's just, it kind of depends on where you want to work. Um, the apprenticeship is more geared towards resorts, country clubs, those kind of things. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, really, I mean, and you kind of wanted a mix of both, like an entrepreneurial right. route, right. which I've always said was really, you, you needed to be. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, there's I don't, something of you that's... I don't do great with a boss. I don't, <laughs> I don't do great with a boss. Oh, so. uh, uh, that's yeah, fun. So one of my, one of my teachers, um, the guy, the chef, one of the chef instructors there at the school, um, worked with the woman who founded my company on the side. And he got me involved with it, and that became something that I love. So going into people's houses, cooking, being in big fancy kitchens. And um, you don't have to clean up your own kitchen. No, but, no. But we I, clean up their kitchen, though. We do all the dishes. Hey, we do all that. I've heard that. I've seen it, yeah. at least on paper. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you are a good cleaner, I assume, uh, <laughs> if you have a child. Uh, let's talk about uh, Chef U B Ham. That's right. It's B-H-A-M, B-H-A-M right? B-H-A-M, yeah. Yep. All right, tell us about it. So we're a personal chef business. Um we come in, I meet with the clients ahead of time, we determine a menu, kind of how the party goes, and then when we get to the house, we do all the cooking there at the house, uh, do all the cleaning, but start to finish in the house. How far in advance is somebody contacting you to set up this party? Usually about a month. So um, about a month yeah, ahead About of time. a month to six weeks out, I can fit people into my schedule pretty well. For December, December is almost fully booked. I've had people on the books for December uh, from June. Wow, that's it's, crazy. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I think one of the things that's interesting to me is you the idea of you actually being on, let's say you're an actor on set, if you right. will, you're prepping a lot of this time, too, during the week when you say you're working, right? Yeah, uh, not the food. Not the not food. food, no. All but the you're food. buying. Yeah, yeah. So I'll buy the food. I'll go and buy all the, the ingredients uh, two or three days before the party. Gotcha. And most of them local, I assume? Uh, a lot yeah, of oh produce. Yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah uh, as local as I can get it. Um, man, have you ever met any of these guys that it doesn't buy local? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. I'd rather pay for the food than pay for the gas. So. Yeah, you know, I found interesting on your on your website. You said set the table, pick the wine, and we'll do the rest. That's right. I mean, That's right. and we'll even set the table if you need us to. Wow. We'll even do that part. So yeah, we don't. I don't have a liquor license, uh, so we let folks handle their own alcohol. <laughs> uh, it's oh, just yeah. better that way. But, yeah, it really is that easy. And you know what's really funny? I think you're more of a beer guy anyway, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you I play so. into the... Most folks, yeah. With dinner a dinner like this, you, <laughs> you kind of want wine. You don't, have a, you don't have a beer pairing menu. I don't, but I could. It'd be fun to do. Actually, I do think it would be, be fun good. to do, yeah. The guys would love it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, all right, so you talk about, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, I went through, and although I know a lot about your business, but one of the things about your website is you do have a lot of the information... And you talk about menus are crafted from what is in season. That's so right. what what is a menu like right now, and how does that differ, say, from the spring or summer? So right now, a lot of uh, winter vegetables, so Brussels sprouts, butternut squash, um, more rich kind of meats, so like short ribs and um, gumbo is on there. We've got a pear salad. Pears are in season right now. Oh, are they really? Yeah. The canned pears are yep. year-round for me. No, can, yeah, canned stuff is always in season, I guess. Um, so, yeah, lots of root vegetables and sort of heavier meats. Um, in the springtime, especially in the summer, lots of tomatoes. Alabama, we get wonderful tomatoes in Alabama. Yeah, yeah. So lots of tomatoes, corn, that kind of stuff. Am I reading, I mean, I'm looking at a lot of this, and it's a lot of it's root root vegetables. That's right, yeah. Is That's that... what's in season right now. Okay, yeah. so that is right. I mean, yeah. 
I'm not claiming to be a foodie here, but uh, <laughs> no, I realize yeah. they all have yeah, roots. You start to write, yeah, carrots, beets, potatoes, sweet potatoes, that kind uh, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. So that's interesting. So uh, basically, when you go to your, your all these menus, this is a sample menu, or would that be? A menu you would serve. So this is my menu. Uh, the current menu on the website is what I'm doing right now. So if somebody was going to have a party this weekend, they would pick an option from each course. So yeah. if I'm having a dinner party at Christmas, am I mm-hmm. choosing one from each or am I choosing... That's up to you. So the typical meal is four courses. The appetizer we serve from the bar uh, while people are coming in, oh, okay. cocktails, that thing, gotcha. kind of thing. And then the other three courses we serve at the table. And do you provide a waiter or two or something? Depends on the size of the party. Um, mostly we can do all the weight type stuff ourselves. Wow, because um, you're that prepared. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it's, you know, it, the average party is 12 people. We're not talking about a 100-person <laughs> yeah. dinner party. Most people don't have seats in their house for 100 people. So yeah, that's 12 crazy. to 15 people, we can, two or three of us can handle I mean, so. let's go through, I mean, look at this. I mean, this is the first course. I mean, duck liver mousse. I mean, uh, charred Brussels sprout crostini with ricotta and peanut pine nuts. Pine nuts, I saw a number of times. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't sound like somebody coming from Mississippi, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all, but you know what the thing is? It does have a very southern. Yeah. The southern <laughs> roots are there, for sure. I mean, shrimp and grits are on the menu. Um, crawfish? Crawfish, crawfish piccata is on the menu. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a southern inspired kind of thing. And, and uh, now, talk about what is the most popular off-site menu like we're looking at Filet here? mignon. Oh, yeah. Well, Filet me... mignon and chocolate souffle, I do half the time, two-thirds of the time. Now, do you do like yeah. Cherry's Jubilee and stuff like that? Uh, never done Cherry's Jubilee. I feel like we're but... on a cruise ship. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we do. The desserts get to be kind of creative, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is fascinating. And now, uh, look at these desserts. Uh, chocolate souffle, custard tart, peach leaf rice pudding. Uh, cho- what, is, what is frangipane? <laughs> Frangipan is a uh, it's a pastry cream. It's an Italian pastry cream that is made with almonds. So if you've ever had an almond croissant, oh, yeah, it yeah, has yeah. the almond cream yeah, filling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's frangipane. Oh, it's just a fancy. It's a fancy Italian way to say it. Yeah, it. yeah. You know what's really funny is a number of times I've been out with Amanda. She loves these uh, you know nice restaurants, and I've, I've thought about texting him going. Can you just translate? You'd be like Google Translate. You need an app, yeah. You need an app that translates it. It just puts to, it over it. Common. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of people because a lot of this, I don't know, peanut sesame mole? Mole is a, um, a traditional Mexican sauce. See, there you go. I mean, that that actually makes it more appetizing right. than the mole. <laughs> than mole, yeah. Yeah, than mole. yeah. yep. So, so, that's, so that's your menu. Now, do you yep. do wine pairing menus? I can. Um, what I tell people, unless they're really, really into wine, I tell them, get what you like. Because if you don't like the wine, even if I think technically this yeah. wine goes with this dish, if you don't like the wine, you're not going to think it goes well. Right, right. If you like a certain style of wine, you're going to like that wine with just about anything. And will you work with them? Because, I mean, you've had to learn, I think, some of that, right? A oh, lot yeah. of the, what the wines taste like. Yeah. And... yeah, I've done quite a few wine tastings. We did a good bit of wine tasting in Paris and a good bit of wine tasting in all over Italy. So, yeah, I'm, I can do that kind of thing. Um, most That's going to get harder as you tap the kids along because they're going to love yeah. just sitting around sipping yeah. wine. Yeah, we took Adeline when uh, Brooke was on maternity leave with Adeline. She was six weeks old, and we oh, did the bourbon trail in Kentucky. So yeah, there you yeah. go. I, so, you know, she's just going to go. That's right. That's go. right. Yep. Uh, all right. So uh, you work in you. So you said you you'll work in in say uh, Larry Toth's kitchen. Sure. Right, sure. uh, and you'll go into the kitchen and now talk about. Do you bring all your own equipment? And... Yes, yeah, I bring anything I need to prepare the food. I bring except the stove, obviously, except the stove. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. pots and pans, uh, any kind of equipment we bring. It just guarantees that one, we don't have to rummage through people's cabinets, and I know that I'm going to be able to make the food that I want to make on equipment that I'm comfortable cooking on that I've been cooking on for years. Wow, of course. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and so pans and stuff is yours. And then uh, talk about uh, owner's involvement in this process because you're very interactive. Right. It's as much or as little as they want to be. So we have people who are hands-on, and they'll come in and help chop vegetables if they want to do that, if that's something they're interested in. Um, Most of the time, we're in the kitchen. People, if there's a bar, people sit at the bar and ask us questions while we're cooking. That's We love that part of it. Um, The... The people who work with me all enjoy the interaction. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And you got the demeanor. I mean, you know, it's funny when we work together. And he, you know, I can get wound up at times, and can just hey, it's okay. Yeah. We're good. Yep. Uh, and I think that's in a kitchen is a 
I mean, there's people waiting on that food to get out That's at right. a specific time. And That's you're right. Yeah, and things go wrong. <laughs> and we've had things go wrong. You, know, you burn something, and we don't have a freezer full of stuff or a cooler full of stuff to go and get extra out of. So, yeah, it can, so it's it tough. can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, but it's fun. That's a lot of the fun. Have you had to make a run to the... Uh... A few times. A few times. Hey, he's honest, too, yeah, which is true. Yeah. Uh, but it's better to do that than to serve bad food or serve something that's missing an ingredient or something like that because we screwed something up. Oh, absolutely. And You know, one of the most interesting things that you do, I was talking to some ladies today, and, and I was talking about Chef Ken coming on cooking classes right. and like r- real food not just like how to cook brownies right right we can do that if you want that but yeah this whatever is the, yeah. i think of it as a sips and strokes of culinary yeah. yes yes yeah very similar to that so yeah new thing that we're offering classes um i don't think anybody else in town's really doing it at least not at this level where we come in and teach you to make things that you want to make that you're going to make after you leave I mean, it, it, it's impressive. It's 100% hands-on. That's right. You'll go to them. Yep. So there's no no need to take Uber home. No, don't take Uber home. Not at all. <laughs> and so talk about who your typical, I don't want to call them student because this is a fun activity. Yeah. But who are these people and how do they know what they're going to cook? Mostly it's people who are interested in food um, who want to be better home cooks. So the food we're cooking in the classes is a little bit different from what we do in the dinner parties. It's not as formal. It's not quite as fancy. Um, it's things that people can cook on their own that they want to know how to cook. So I, we have a consultation ahead of time, um, determine the menu, kind of get an idea of what their skill level is and what they're looking to do, what they want to learn, and tailor the, the menu to fit that. Well, yeah, and, and you got, let's let's see, I, I counted seven different types of parties, but like you said, hey, Ruby said, hey, from the Philippines. Hey, Ruby, how are you? Good to hear from you. Um, he's big time now. <laughs> You know, we're kind of a big deal, but he's really big. So, um, seven different types. So, knife skills. What in the world? Knife skills. So, the biggest thing that can take somebody from sort of an average home cook to a really good home cook is being comfortable with their knives. Um, you want the food, the size of the things that you cut, to be consistent and to be even, and the food cooks more evenly that way. You don't end up with a big chunk of onion and a small piece of onion, and the small piece gets burned, and the big chunk is raw, and your food's not any good. Well, so guilty. knife skills is is the basics. We spend in culinary school several weeks, and we're going to talk about it in a few yeah. minutes with Ken. He's he's offered to kind of talk to us a little bit about, I mean, what we need in that kitchen, yeah. you know. <clears throat> um, date night. This is a big one, I think. Yeah, date night. Um, I, people love to cook for their significant others, and especially in the courting stage. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and you know. If you can cook something, a date night type meal, you don't have to go out on Valentine's Day. You don't have to go out on New Year's Eve and fight the crowds and pay crazy prices. You stay in. And, yeah. And, and one thing, we're he, he'll talk to you freely about the cost. You know, it's funny. is you, you may look and say, hey, look at what you're paying when you're going out to eat. Right. And you're not even getting what you want right. necessarily. Right. He's giving you exactly what you want. That's right. I think when you really break down the price, I mean, I don't know if Larry Toth's still on here, but... We had to get a. We were in Turks and Caicos and had to buy a case of Corona, if I'm remembering right. Mm-hmm. It was eighty dollars, right? I mean, now, yeah. now it's, it's got to be flown in, flown in, all that. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, but I was willing to it's pay still, for that, right? Because yeah, because exactly. I wanted, you it. wanted it. Yeah, that's right. So I, I think we get what we want. Absolutely. Um, and so, by the way, I mean, so I think these prices are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, baking. Uh, any thoughts there? It's again, a lot of people enjoy baking and not. Cooking, uh, cookies, pies, whatever. Whatever they cook, yeah, right? Because yeah. there is an art to that. I mean, it's much more of a science. Oh, so, science. Yeah. So yeah. most of cooking is more art. You can add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that. It's fine. It change it. You like it, whatever. Baking is much more of a science. You've got to have the right ratios of flour, eggs, butter, baking powder, baking soda, yeast, whatever it is, to make the thing you're baking come out. I just correct. thought of something. I bet yeah. you're a big cornbread guy. Yeah. Been from the south. Yeah. I mean, and you will mix stuff. Yeah. Did you see my? Did you see, did you no, I didn't even say that. Didn't the it says uh, make cornbread, not war. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. So, <laughs> Larry. Uh, all right, uh, weeknight dinners and and well, let's go there first. Weeknight dinners. Weeknight dinners is exactly what it sounds like. Things that you can make in forty-five minutes, um, as few pots as possible. So you don't have a bunch of dishes to do. You know, you want to go to bed, whatever, um, and things that will make for good leftovers. And replicatable. Right. Right? I mean, that's the biggest... uh, He says, and I drank it all. (laughs) Yes. 
Um, but you should you pay eighty dollars. Yeah, eighty dollars. I was not going to leave that house. Uh, but uh, yeah, so because I think that that is one thing. Because you know we've seen some of these companies come and go mm-hmm. that just made them for you. The problem is I don't have time to stop there, but I may have time to. I have to go to the grocery store anyway. Right. And so you're solving that problem by saying, "Let me show you some easy ways." Yeah. And hopefully something different. You know, a lot of people get stuck in the same rut of Chicken making... Chicken casserole? That's right. Yeah, the same meatloaf, the same three things every week, week after week. And and this hopefully is something a little bit different. It's maybe a little bit better. What about special diet? Because there are a lot of families that have a kid with an allergy or yeah. a wife with an allergy. Yeah, so my daughter has an egg allergy and a banana allergy. Uh, For a cook. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's been interesting. It's been fun to kind of learn, especially any kind of baked goods have eggs in them. Um, so yeah, so... Well, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, so we've learned how to kind of make replacements. So that's what the special diet class, um, if you have an allergy or if you're just interested, you know, you hear the word paleo and want to know what that's about. Yeah, all right. You can do a whole class on paleo and kind of the pros and cons of it and, and that kind of thing. And how do you, how, I assume you're keeping up. I mean, do you have places you go to read and learn all this? Yeah, yeah. So I have a couple of food magazines I subscribe to. I buy tons of cookbooks, more cookbooks oh, yeah. than I could ever need. And yeah, yeah. And uh, cook, this was interesting, cooking with kids. And when, before we started, I was telling them, I really think this is huge. Because I have a nine-year-old girl, Karen Charles is on here. She's got some young youngins. Hey, I think this is huge. Yeah. Cooking with kids, I think the I started cooking at seven years old. Not doing a lot. Not, you know, handling a big knife or anything. But mixing up cookie dough. That kind Simple. Of thing. I think getting your kids in the kitchen is huge and, and definitely can... Help them appreciate the food a little bit more, and then eventually be able to feed themselves. Which... I, and you know, I mean, we're here, you know we talk personal finance and real estate here, and I think it does relate to that because you're going to save money. Oh yeah, cooking and not going out all That's the right. time. Yeah, yeah, cheaper and better for you to not go through the Chick Fil A. I mean, you've worked in restaurants. I mean, going out to eat has. I mean, there's overhead that you just don't have when you go buy the stuff. That's right. Yeah, and, when you're when you're out to eat. A lot of the price you see on the menu is for the building, and that's it. That's just crazy. Yeah, no. it is funny. I mean, there's sometimes which is fine. Large. They've got to, yeah. I mean, they've got to keep the the lights on, and that's fine. But that is a lot of what you're paying for. Right, for sure. right. And it's crazy. And then now the dinner party, you're gonna you teach them on how to serve a dinner party, right? right? Yeah. So separate from the dinner parties that we come in and do, which is our traditional service. Yeah, they come in and and uh, I'll teach them. Sort of how to make a prep list, how to time things so that everything's ready at the same time, and to sort of decrease the stress of them wow. throwing their own dinner party. Wow. And talk about growing, you know, for the folks here that like to, because, you know, hey, one of the biggest things now is uh, I think people like to play farmer. Mm-hmm. I mean, more people having chickens, yeah, all that, chickens. Uh, you know, uh, raised garden, yep. which I know you have. We do. Uh, talk about that, about, about growing your own and some of the tips you may have for folks on that. Tips for growing, read about it. There's plenty of books, plenty of resources online to learn. Um, the biggest thing is knowing when to plant and to have things ready when they need to be ready. You, know, you can't plant tomatoes right now, obviously. Most people in Alabama know that. Well, I, I think what you're saying is that taking you know Ken's menu that you can see on his website, yep. of thinking that through in the spring, all right, yes. in the fall I'm going to be making these casseroles that are right. butternut squash. That's right. Right, and so yeah. I, I think that that's, and, and I'm sure there's plenty of resources that can help you yeah. with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, all over. Um, easy things to find online. Um, you can find books on urban gardening, especially. Urban um, gardening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have one book on urban gardening, and it's anywhere from, you know, five square feet and have a vegetable garden. It's not, you know, not going to be a lot, but. And what's, what's it, what does it cost for someone to establish a, just, a, just something to, because I know it costs money because you got to get all the equipment and. Right. So a, a garden, yeah, a raised garden. Most of the cost is the soil. When we built our raised gardens, we spent a couple hundred dollars on soil. Yeah, it's not bad. No, it's not. Especially with all the, you know with what we get from it, we got more than a couple hundred dollars worth of vegetables from it. Um, but that's it. That, the main cost you can dig a hole if you've got the yard, just dig a hole. Yeah. But so you don't need a raised bed necessarily. You don't have to. So what you want to do? So maybe raised six or eight inches off the ground. Of new soil. Of new soil, you might dig down two or three inches. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's still raised, but the the roots are going to go down, so you have that that really good soil. And what is what is what is a what's one thing that damages that we they need to watch out for in terms of insects, animals? 
it depends on what you're growing. Mostly it's insects. Um, aphids are real bad. Moths, moths will go in and, and lay eggs, and then that larva comes and, and eats up the plants. So get a chicken. Chickens, wow. Chickens eat all that stuff. One thing, you know, I wanted to ask you too while you're here is about organic cooking. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what are your thoughts there? I mean, because so much of it's a scam. Uh, when I'm when I say I don't think the organic movement's a scam. So organic is a marketing label. Yeah, there you There's go. No That's question. where I'm getting at. There's no question. But that doesn't mean that everything labeled organic is bad. No. It doesn't mean that things that aren't organic are better or you know better or not. The biggest thing, the main example I use is milk. We don't necessarily buy organic milk. And people say, how you know you eat healthy? Why do you not buy organic milk? Cows are meant to eat grass. They're not meant to eat corn and soy. Yeah. Right. So we put more of an emphasis on buying products that are raised or grown the way they're naturally meant to. Like grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef, milk from grass-fed cows. Organic milk could be from a cow that's been fed organic soybeans. And that's organic milk because the food that's been fed is organic. Um, it doesn't mean it's necessarily the best milk for you. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, a Whole Foods made a living off of yeah yeah. i mean not saying whole foods is bad no and a lot of the products are better if they're organic but not because they're organic yeah what i would say is research the farms and find out what the practices are of the farms that you're buying the food from gotcha gotcha and then how does somebody do that talk to them go in birmingham especially go to pepper place um yeah great place yeah you can talk to the farmers they love when people ask questions about how they Grow their so do you, do you suggest people go places like that to get their vegetables? As much as you can, yeah. And sometimes you can't. No. But as much as you can, go there. Um, you're going to pay a little bit higher price, but you're getting better quality. For sure. and that, that begs the question then of all, you know, and I'm not trying to pin you whole, pin all you on, what are some of the better of the grocery stores for produce and uh, vegetables? Trader Joe's, uh, surprisingly, I always thought of it as sort of packaged food. I did too. And, but they have a wonderful produce selection, and it's as cheap as you can find it. Really? Sure. Yeah. Now, what about this whole new deal with like Aldi and these other guys? I haven't shot much at Aldi. I've heard good things. I heard milk's like a dollar. But yeah, yeah. I wonder how it could be that cheap. Uh, yeah. It'd still be quality, but yeah. but I've heard good things. Yeah. So. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. Who knows? But uh, that that's interesting. But uh, well, uh, moving on to the next <clears throat> segment. Uh, House Logic came out with a story where they interviewed, and I was reading this, and they were interviewing two professional chefs and on how they would build the. Perfect personal home kitchen. And hey, who better to answer that question than Ken? And I asked Ken about this, and he said, yeah, these are good things. Uh, One of the number one things they said when you're planning for that kitchen is to plan for more than one cook. Absolutely, yeah. Most people, you know, unless you're you're single, you live alone, most people at some time are going to have multiple people in their kitchen cooking. And to cook, you need to be able to move as the main cook, right? That's right, yeah, that's right. And um, this is something that we can spend a little bit of time on here is, you know, we talk a lot about the kitchen triangle. Mm-hmm. And that is what? The prep area, the cooking area, and the, and the sink. And the sink. Yeah. Or, or the refrigerator. refrigerator. Yeah. What what makes that most important for a someone that loves to cook? It's You don't want to have to take a bunch of steps. Or you don't want to have to walk around an island to get from one thing to another. You wear yourself out. So especially like in a professional kitchen, everything is within reach pretty much. So when I worked in restaurants, all I would have to do is turn my back to the stove, turn back around to the prep area. Everything was right there within arm's reach. It's not really realistic in a, in a home kitchen, but you want things as close as possible. But if you're designing it or you're redoing right. it, uh, and because I assume you see in a lot of these kitchens, I was thinking, you know, when I, we were talking about this earlier, was a lot of times they're putting that sink right in the island, right behind you, but that's your drop zone right if you're pulling around right but yet it's like they're to me it's like these builders are just cramming everything they can yeah yeah into too much equipment into a a real small space yeah and what are some other things in relative to this triangle we're talking about um that you would be on the lookout for uh it's ease of use um so one of the big things that i see is not enough counter space on either side of the stove that's interesting where you can't where you can't actually work right next to the stove. So if you're cooking a couple of different things, you might have something on a cutting board that you're working on while something else is on the stove cooking. It's nice if you can be right there next to it within arm's reach. Um, a lot of times people will put the, the stoves in a real narrow area with just a foot or two of clearance. Countertops yeah, 
Right. And then um, next <clears throat> thing they talked about was buying the right stuff. That's right. And not skimping. We'll talk about that. Yeah. So to me, the biggest thing that I like to see when I go into a, a house to cook a dinner party, it's a deep sink. Um, so you can get a lot of stuff in there as you're cooking. So, you don't so you, with... does a real cook want the deep one partition? No I prefer partition. two. I prefer two compartments. That way you can fill up one with soapy water. And you can put dirty things in there. And then as you rinse them off, you can put it uh, into the other side. Helps keep them from getting broken, too. That's right. Yeah, helps keep them from getting broken and, and helps clean. But I would rather have a one-compartment deep sink than a multi-compartment Where they're all sink. over the place. Right. Man, so talk, talk about the quality of equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking stoves, those type things. Yep. You know, one thing they talked about was, hey, we don't want you to have commercial yep. uh, appliances. We want you to have top-of-the-line Residential. Right. What are they talking about? So commercial appliances are made to cook a lot of food really, really fast. So that when you sit down in a restaurant and order, you don't have to wait 30 minutes on whatever. Does that mean they're order. burning just a like? It's a lot of hot. energy. It's a lot of energy usage, really, really hot. Lots of burners. Most people cooking at home are never going to use more than two or three burners at a time. And a commercial stove might have eight eyes on it. And, you know, one of the interesting things somebody asked me today when I was telling them you were coming was... Uh, Ask them about the why gas or induction. By the way, I don't know what induction means. Uh, didn't pass <laughs> concepts of science. But uh, talk about why y'all prefer gas over my coils. It's an instant heat source. So when you turn on gas, you get a flame, and that flame is as hot as it's going to be right when you turn it on. It doesn't take time to warm up. Okay. The coil stove, you turn that coil on oh, to, right, to say medium high or seven or whatever your stove says. It's going to take a few minutes for it to actually get hot, and then it might end up being hotter than you want it to. If you turn it down, it's going to take some time for it to cool back off. If you have an actual flame there, you turn it on, it's hot. You turn it off, it's not hot anymore. So it's a lot more control with the gas. Induction is the same way. Induction uses a what mag- does that mean? Uses a magnetic field. Oh, to, these are the ones that you can put your hand. You can oh. put your hand on; they're cool to the touch. Um, you can't use aluminum pans on them. Anything that a magnet would stick to, you can use. Oh, okay. Because it uses magnetism to create electrical current to generate heat. Now, why does they cook like that, though? Somebody like you, or somebody at home that likes to cook, why do you like not It doesn't heat up the kitchen. So, when you have a gas flame, that flame is heating up the pot that's on top of it, but it's also heating up the air around the stove. Because you're moving, too, so you're already getting hot. Right, right. So, induction is much cooler. So, if you have a big kitchen... Um, lots of things going on at once, that induction is going to keep the kitchen much cooler. You know, one of the interesting quotes that these guys said was talking about cooking with a feeling. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that just because a recipe says this is going to take 10 minutes, it may not take 10 minutes because your equipment's not the same as the equipment that the recipe was written on. Ah, gotcha. That's why the coil stove is just a uh, crap shoot. Yeah, so the cooking with a feeling is you, you taste the food as you go. And you use your own judgment. To know so you don't do like out. the rest of us and go into the other room and come no. up, hey, is it boiling no, yet? No, you don't leave it. Yeah, you don't leave it. <laughs> That's funny. You know, they, they talk about having abundant refrigeration mm-hmm. in the house. Uh, I assume that's... Cause one of the things that they mentioned, too, was having, if you love to cook, having some of your sauces pre-made and certain things pre-made that you can... But keep them away and bring them in when you need them. Yeah, and that's... It just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a big dinner party... If you can do two or three things ahead of time, especially make sauces that are going to reheat well, yeah, you do that ahead of time, get it in the fridge, in the garage, or in the basement. Beer or cooler, wherever. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it's out of your way until you actually need it. Gotcha. Uh, Michael Bruno said, Why can you eat some poultry medium rare like duck and squab, but turkey has to be cooked well? Uh, it mostly has to do with the way animals are raised in the United States. Um, big conventional farming practices lead to, especially with chicken and turkey, where we consume a lot of it as a country. Okay. They're in, there's a lot of animals in a real small area, and so you have a higher chance of diseases. So cooking to that higher temperature um, gives you a better chance of eliminating those diseases. Ducks and, and squab, that kind of thing. Now what are, is a squab? I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I believe it's uh, a certain type of pigeon. Okay. And yeah. Americans don't really have a taste for pigeon. If you see pigeon on the menu. You're not going to eat it. Right. So it's a squab. I think that's right. I could be wrong. Hey, that's it. interesting that what he's talking about. So 
if I go into a restaurant now, is he saying that, that they're not going to cook my turkey medium rare? Right, yeah. If you ordered or if you ordered a piece of chicken medium rare, they're going to look crazy at you. And because it's a risk for them, it's a risk for you. Um, but the way those ducks are raised, especially duck, is uh, raised usually in an environment where there's not a high chance of disease. I had no idea. That, so you can order that medium rare. I mean, hey, great question. Yep, very good question. Uh, what uh, Ken, what are the most important appliances, small or large? Because I, you know, I think a lot of times we think stove, refrigerator, but there are other things in the kitchen that are most important. The the thing that's most important to me in terms of appliances is the hood over the stove. Really? Yes. It's the most boring to me. It is. It's the most boring. But a good one, it it keeps your kitchen from getting smoky. You can cook really high heat. You can sear a steak on on the stove. You don't smoke up your kitchen. Um, yeah, that's and you want one that vents actually out of the house yeah right right my at my house the microwave that blows the air right back in the your air face, sucker it's not yeah. it's not doing anything well you know and one thing you got to be real careful with when you're buying a new home is make sure that inspector and you have gone up in the attic and make sure what he's talking about is that that air is getting all actually the way out the house, that's right. not into the attic because you talk about one of the biggest uh fire hazards oh absolutely yeah. Especially if it's somebody like you cooking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're cooking a bunch of meat, real fatty meat, and that all that hot grease is getting blown into your head, I mean, it's not. So you've got a gas yeah. furnace in your head. Yeah. it's not. Oof. It's not a good. You, you a got good. Oklahoma City right. Uh, right. going, but uh, all right. So what about like anything that cuts like uh, the cousin art? Uh, I might be showing my uh, lack of knowledge here, but anything else? that's small appliances. Um, a Vitamix blender. Vitamix really? Blender. Yeah, you can cook soup in it. Um, you can make smoothies in it. It'll take. It'll blend anything. The old. You remember the old uh, commercials? The Will It Blend? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. was the Vitamix blender. And it's they're expensive and they are absolutely worth it. Uh, yeah. K- Karen Charles asked about. What, well, yeah. that question. Whatever you should have. So you, Vitamix blender. Vitamix blender. And this is, is like the bullet type thing, right? No. The bullet. Uh, no. This is a big. It's boxy and bulky, and they're four or five hundred dollars, but they will last. Grandkids can have them. Really? Fine. Absolutely. Definitely. And now, when did they come out? Are they years ago? Oh. They're probably about twenty years, or something. maybe thirty years now. Uh, all right. What kind of countertop? When somebody's designing that house, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many. I know you know all of them. What What would you put in your home? Either quartz or granite. Really? Yeah, quartz or granite? Yeah, they're they're good with heat. Um, they don't stain. the The biggest thing that I would stay away from is marble. They're beautiful. But they stain way too easy. They're sensitive to heat, especially if you're a cook. I yeah. mean, and we're talking specifically yeah. about cooks, right? Um, yeah. You get a little bit of tomato juice on that marble, and you have pink marble now. It's crazy. Yeah, and you can get it off. There are ways to get it off. Wow, you're really sanding it down. Yeah, I mean, they're hard to clean, and they're not as as heat. I say, so. I assume soapstone soft too. So I think so. Uh, yeah, quartz or granite. And laminate's not. If it's if it's what you can afford, it's what you can afford. Well, no, it's what you can afford, but yeah. if you're a cook, let's, let's splurge on these things. Yeah. I don't know if anybody knows uh, Kate Giffen, great realtor here in town. You know Kate? Yeah. Uh, Kate, her big splurge, uh, you know, her husband owns a restaurant over there at the Ross Bridge, and she wanted a, uh, she bought herself a uh, Italian stove. Okay. And it was it was one of those things, though, that, I mean, apparently it cooks things very well, mm-hmm. it better. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just find what you like, right? That's right. And, that's right. Especially with knives. So that's, I know you want to ask about knives and what you're Yeah, we're getting there. Okay. All right. Now, because that's kind of the cool stuff at mm-hmm. the end. Uh, but what kind of flooring do you enjoy? Because you go in all these houses. Yeah. What's the best for in the kitchen? Um, so I just put bamboo in my house, the whole house. Wow. I love it. Bamboo's in the kitchen. Soft. It's soft. Um, I love it. And it's great. But tiles, you love it from fine. a cooking standpoint? Because you're dropping stuff. I Certainly, Adeline's dropping stuff. <laughs> she does. She does. The only, I guess, most of it's easy to clean. Most most floors, for what we're doing, you're not we're not leaving stuff down there. We're wiping it up right away. Um, the bigger thing, if you're going to be doing a lot of cooking, is get a pair of good shoes. Really? Yeah. yeah. The shoes are more important than the floor to me if you're going to be in the kitchen for a long time. And there's time. no stress mats, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. No stress mats. But when I worked in restaurants, we had cement floors and these hard rubber mats. Yeah. And I spent a lot of money on shoes, and it was well worth it. My feet never hurt. It's just crazy. Well, you know what's funny is I, I was getting my hair cut the other day, and I was laughing with the lady because she was talking about uh, she her, her own shearer. Mm-hmm. Like, she can't deal with another shearer. The same thing can be said about you guys and your knives. That's right. That's so, right. So talk about what Karen Charles here needs to make sure she has in her kitchen if she wants to be a good cook. So a couple things is the cutting board that you cut on. 
either wood or plastic, nothing else. Um, a lot of people. Wood or plastic. Yeah. Okay. Because they're softer than the metal that the knife's made out of. So a lot of people have glass cutting boards. The glass is harder than the knife, and it dulls the knife way too fast. So, so don't be taking that sharp knife and cutting on a glass cutting board. Glass cutting board or your granite countertops, because it's going to ruin your knife. Yeah. So if I go into Bed Bath and Beyond today, is that, are they going to have a lot of glass cutting boards? Yes, absolutely. Oh wow. Absolutely. They're pretty, and they're, but if you're going to cook a lot and you if you're going to invest money in knives, knives are good. Knives are expensive. You want them to last. And do you do you do you recommend folks buy a set? this together or do you do you want to go find the different knives separately? individual knives most I, sets are going to have things that you're never going to use what i did and what i recommend is go to a store like william sonoma or a store like sir Latov summit and they'll let you hold the knives in your hand all different brands whatever they have hold them they'll let you kind of pretend to chop vegetables whatever and find what's comfortable. yeah you're not really going to get it you're going to go ahead and cut the table. <laughs> yeah but find what's comfortable in your hand that's the yeah. main thing um hello some, mother some are too heavy, some are too light, some are off balance. It's just really, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Now, okay, so whatever feels good. If you were to pick three knives, because you know it's funny, not it wasn't until recently. I mean, I'm 42 for crying out loud, and I didn't realize that it was. I just picked the one that I felt like could do it. But if you pick three different types of knives that everybody yeah. should have, a chef's knife. Um, what does that do? It, it's your main chopping vegetables, cutting meat. That's a big purpose. thick one. It's a big thick one, sort of all purpose knife. Um, and then a, a bread knife, which is the long blade serrated knife. Uh, you need it for cutting bread. If you try to use a chef's knife to cut bread, it'll smash. That's a lot, lots of teeth. That's right. Lots of teeth. It's also what you need to cut really ripe tomatoes and other really ripe vegetables. Really? Tomato? tomato. Yeah. It'll slice through it versus smashing it with a chef's knife. I didn't think about that. Yeah. 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 So a real sharp knife will not be good for tomato. No. Sharp knife is great. You want sharp, but... The, you need the serration, the teeth, oh, on gotcha. the bread knife to cut through it without squishing. So to get through there. That's right. All right, one more. And then a paring knife. Now, so what a is small, a paring knife? Small paring knife, two and a half, three inches, maybe three and a half inches. And it lets you cut things that you're going to hold in your hand as you're cutting. I'll translate for you a lime. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know how I know that. Yeah. Uh, it's called the happy hour for a there reason. You, you know, you uh, the... Uh, I mean, all this stuff, Ken. I mean, is there anything else you would say in a kitchen that just folks, when you're when they're building or they're thinking about uh, building one out, that they gotta have? I don't know. I think we've covered most of it. I think gotta haves. It's really things that you're comfortable with. Um, you know, as much as you can in a showroom or whatever, play with it, stand at it, make sure it's the right height, because that's the big key. Is that you're comfortable? I didn't think about height. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that that. See, all, these are huge nuggets. I mean, I, I think if people can take away anything, I mean, I in prepping for this, I never in a million years would have thought I would have heard the vent hood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By far the most important. <laughs> that's, that's just, I mean, it's wild, but it's yeah. probably true because, you know, it wasn't obvious. Um, I mean, that's just crazy to me. So, uh, well, man, I, you know, uh, we're going to, I'm going to tell you in a little bit how to get to them, but we're going to move on to real estate stuff, Ken. We're going to talk about the real estate market inventories okay. are way down. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that in my neighborhood. No house, three houses for sale in my 150 house neighborhood. All right, we do have. Well, hold on. Before we get in this, hey, another question for you. What about backsplash material? Something that's easy to clean. Um, so they're making a mistake a lot of times when they're putting that grout intensive. Uh, yeah, that stuff will get stained. Um, yeah, I think bigger tiles better than smaller tiles if you really want tile. Um, the other thing you can do is, you know, put some sort of barrier, a piece of glass or something, piece of, of uh, plexiglass or something. It kind of looks cheap. It looks cheesy, but it's easy to clean. It'll protect it. What do you, do you, do you, I bet over in Mississippi, do y'all have all those, uh, your seat, your dining room seats covered? Yeah, you know? of course. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the other thing that a lot of people do now is build their kitchen so that the stove is in the island, so that you, there is no backsplash. There is no wall right directly behind the stove. Just there's a, a few feet of countertop. Oh, gotcha. It. And then, it's just easy to wipe up. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, all right. Uh, any more questions? Just ask away, uh, and I'll I'll come back to you here. Uh, but inventories are way down, down 11 percent year over year. Ken, one of the biggest problems we got is sales are up, inventories down. That has to mean prices are going up. Right? Prices are going up, and we're seeing it. Uh, you know, uh, prices up three and a half percent on single family homes. Okay. I tell you, and, and quite frankly, this is, but you know, it's the first time in our generation, I can tell you, uh, 
that we've seen rising prices with rising interest rates. Yeah. I mean, so, something's going to have to give, and it's probably going to be not be the interest rates. It'll be prices are going to have to level off here. So you think it'll push inventory up anytime soon? Yeah, I don't. Know. We got to get people off the schneid, <laughs> right? Because everybody's like in in your neighborhood. Yeah. Think of people are pointing at each other, going, "How about you sell yours first? Right. Because I don't have anywhere to go. Because if you're in Ken's neighborhood, you're certainly not moving in the same neighborhood. But where am I going to go? And we're seeing a lot of folks from out of state. Those are the ones moving the market right now. Okay. But one of the best things is, you know, we're seeing a lot of folks out there spreading the message about that we're in a big market shift. I just think it's an oddity. I I, I talk about it with David. I don't know if you have an opinion on this, but uh, that the economy is working for Wall Street, which is what we needed to have happen. Mm-hmm. But it hasn't trickled down necessarily. Yeah. And I'm seeing lots of people put stuff on credit cards. I mean, I was looking at a lady today uh, when I was in an office, and she was telling me about having to put like a $2,000 bill on a credit card and make payments. Mm. It was some emergency type thing. Right. And, right. and, you know, that's that's a shame. Yeah, uh, yes. You know, we talk about every week having an emergency fund, being ready to roll. I know you're a big Dave Ramsey yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, at least. Yeah. Grew up with Yeah, yeah, grew up with My parents went through it. But I tell you, Ken, one of the most interesting things is the median days on the market's only 17 days. That's wild. Uh, I mean, that's dead center. That means a lot of these houses are going right when they, you know, hit the market, you know. So, uh, so anyway, numbers looking good. Average sales price in Birmingham, about 242000 Uh Townhomes, uh, only about 165 So we saw that decline a little bit. It's going to be interesting going forward, though, uh, to see what the Fed does uh it's it's fun every day to listen to Trump and and them go back and forth because yeah. they're like we'll do what we want to do and Trump says I'll do what I want to do. Right. Somebody yeah. At some point that's got to. One of y'all's gonna get wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's gotta give. It uh, I mean, you and I've talked about it before, man. It, Trump's a who, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, now, we don't have to talk right. politics. Regardless of the politics, it's, it's, it's gonna be fun to watch it's a back show. ten years from now. It's a show. It'll be interesting to see what people think. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's you never know. Uh, all right, talk about interest rates, uh, man. From when you bought, I remember you bought what about four years ago, yeah. right? Yeah, four what, or five years ago, now, five years ago. What are you about a four percent interest rate? Three? Uh, I think it's under under four. Yeah. Three, Look at this guy. Three seven five. Three seven five. People are gonna kill you now. Well, but, the bad thing is though, when we're ready to move up in a couple of years, yeah, that's right. It's, we're gonna pay a higher rate. Well, gonna, no, that's right. And but the and this is what we were talking about. He's a good example of where he's got to sell. At a higher price yeah. to absorb the the difference in what his buying power was, and that's the biggest thing in a seller's market is that buying power is decreased at all price points. Because no matter what he's moving up to, I mean, I guess if you're in a tiny house, you're going to be moving up to a bigger house, yeah. and, and so at all price points. Yeah. Luckily, and I'd be interested to know what the data says. We bought our house at the bottom of the market for Birmingham, so our neighborhood the prices have grown. Fairly substantially over the last, I think we've been in there six years. See, wow, wow, time flies. And you have two kids practically. Yeah, yeah. So it's, life's changed. Yeah. But but it is interesting that, that, you know, and some of that's inflation. We've talked about that too. But where Ken, Ken's going to beat that inflation. We talked about it two weeks ago, talking about how inflation plays into pr- like right. price. Like I looked at my house at 240000 when I bought it, but I'm going to sell it two eighty. But really, if I look at inflationary numbers, right. it's really... That same dollar from mm-hmm. 06 is worth two ninety now. Right. <laughs> so I'm losing money. Yeah, you're losing money. Where I bought at one fifty, and we're going to sell at two hundred, and so we should be able to outpace that. See, good info. I mean, what good info? What good timing? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just luck for us. But and I, yeah, I think too, you whether you're someone that bought at the height of the market and trying to sell, it, I think everybody's going to catch something. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you always do. Ken will get burned here one day. Yeah. I, I, I might have already. <laughs> uh, you know, but it just it's just about living life. That's right. Uh, talk about mortgage rates real quick before we get to everybody's favorite, the football picks. Um, 30-year fix, 4.63. We have ticked down about two-tenths of a point over last week. And you might say, hey, I, I didn't see it uh, with my mortgage lender this week. That's a national average, folks. So, uh, David's not here, so I have to pull national averages. <laughs> uh Anyway, 30-year fixed FHA, 4.34. Hey, 15-year conventional, if you can do it, do it. Uh, 3.94, under 4 still. The jumbo is only 4.72 this week. And like I say, down two-tenths of a point. Hey, Miss Altafe, how are you? Good to see you. So, 
Hey, interest rates, catch them before they're gone. What's really interesting, because Ken's not... Are you a millennial, technically? Technically, I am. Technically. You don't have like one. But, born, in, uh, born in 86, and so, yeah, that's... Yeah, well, you know, it's so funny. When we're dealing with a lot of these millennials, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, I'm never going to get a mortgage over five, or I'm never going to buy. Well, I'm saying they're still historically low. Right. Now, my my parents, my wife's parents, talk about buying their first house and paying 12%. Some, you know, and it's just, it's nuts. And so, yeah, so whatever you're going to, y- y'all are, you and Brooke are going to pay. It's yes. not bad. Right. Uh, and we pay, I love it when people go, but they only paid 110000 for their house. Right. Well, yeah, but that was made, worth... Right, it was in the 80s, and you know, late 70s, early 80s. And yeah, it's the same as 250 yeah, now. Exactly. It's so exactly. crazy. But all right, everybody's favorite football picks. And by the way, I get more I get more texts and emails over this stuff than anything. Because <laughs> God bless them. They're, let, you know, we're going to talk about Syracuse. They're a Syracuse grad. I'm like, hey, it's just a pick. That's right. It's a good pick. Well, some weeks. But anyway. All right, Ken, need your best analysis yep. here. Syracuse, number 12 Syracuse, is at Notre Dame. Big game for Notre Dame. Yep. Ten and a half points. What do you got on this game? Notre Dame needs to win big if they're going to be in the college playoff. They've got to beat everybody. They've got to beat them big. Notre Dame. Notre right. Dame's going to cover. They're at home. They're going to cover. Yeah, I, I agree with Ken for one reason. If we were at the Carrier Dome, totally different animal. Yeah. 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 You, you know what's really funny? I found out... Uh, when I was up there, I was talking to some people. I went to a game there a few years ago. That they will ebb and flow. It's called the Carrier Dome for a reason. Carrier is a what AC right. manufacturer, or whatever. They will up and down that uh, depending on who they're playing, they're how, playing. how yeah. they can yeah. do it. Found that fascinating. All right, one probably I think one of the highest scoring games of the week: West Virginia yeah. minus five at Oklahoma State. Yep. Yeah. Um, the Big Twelve seems to always beat themselves out of the chance of being in the playoff. Oklahoma State's going to cover. I think Oklahoma State is going to win the game outright. I, you know what? You say outright, so you're taking that money line. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's an Oklahoma State cover. I, I think it's a field goal game, but we're both on the right side. We're just on the wrong side. Now, here's the game that's going to be the <laughs> toughest. Trista said, hello, Ken. Hey, Trista, how are you? Uh, Liberty, I cannot believe. that. Hold on. Let, let's go back to the fact that I don't even have Alabama on here because they don't even have a line. There's no, yeah, who they play. I don't know. I haven't looked at the schedule. I don't even know who they play. But. Uh, I think they're playing the Citadel. Okay. The fact that both of you do this every year is disgraceful. Well, and, the, and that the SEC lets you do this yeah. is disgraceful. I, well, no, this year it's a tough game, apparently, because we're only 27 and a half point favorites <laughs> against Liberty. All right. I mean, these are people that, kids that didn't yeah. go D1, but 27 and a half points all over. I, I'm going Liberty. No. Auburn, Plus 27 and a half yeah, points. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're not taking points. Auburn's going to cover the spread. He's got Auburn's more faith than I do. I don't. It's it's Liberty. Auburn's oh, have spread. you? It's Gus Malzahn is what I <laughs> said. That's a good point. Yeah, good yeah. Point. He forgot that point. And point. uh, yep. all right. Here's here's one that you take pride in. Yep. Arkansas plus twenty one. And I know you love to hear this at number twenty one. Back in you know top twenty five here, uh, Mississippi yep. State. Yep. Um, Arkansas is always tough. We always play them right after we play Alabama. We're beat up from last week. We're going to win, but we're not going to beat them by 21. I would take Arkansas. I'll take the points. You know, Arkansas is one of those teams that is weird this year, yeah. I, especially against the yeah. spread. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think our offense is good enough to outscore them by 21 points. Our defense may be. If we score on defense, we might cover it, but I don't think we will. Well, I will say this. you got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I mean, obviously, Alabama's quarterback is a league yeah. of his own. But I mean, your quarterback's really good and really He's tall. really good. He's really – he is very tall. He's a very good runner. Um, I'd like to see a little more out of him from the passing game. But we'll see. Man, I, I love it when Mississippi State's good because, you know, I really think as a good Mississippi State team actually can get better national attention than Ole Miss, so we need Ole Miss to stink forever. Yeah. And y'all just it's fine. take over. Uh, so, anyway, all right, the big one around Birmingham this week. I mean, this is an interesting game. UAB plus 17 at Texas A&M. Yeah. What a game if they could ever pull this off. Oh, yeah, if they could pull it off, but I don't. I mean, it, is it a talent issue? Yeah, it's just talent. A and M has too many good players. I don't know; they're not a great team, but UAB is a notch below them for sure. Well, you know, and I, you know, I, I agree with you. I think A and M covers the seventeen, but I go back to the Sanford, Florida State game earlier this yeah. year. They had no business being on that field. No, not at all, not at all. But 
A and M this year, I think, is better than Florida State. And Man. their bowl where they go is is highly determined on winning this kind of game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They they may end up playing in Birmingham in the Birmingham yeah, Bowl. Yeah, they... That's my worst fear for yeah. Auburn. <laughs> That's right. Is that I can get up in the morning yep. and just roll out of bed and go see. Yep, just walk in, buy a ticket for a couple of dollars. I think UAB is a wonderful story, and I hope they win the, what the coach. conference USA. Yeah, I hope they can keep him. Um, well, but, but I, I, he's invested in it. They need to pay him whatever. Yeah. Although I don't know whether catching the revenue to come in. Yeah. Because that's what's sad about yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, we talk about it all the time on the weekend about Birmingham and sports. Um, we're the only town uh, in North America to put the baseball stadium and the food and entertainment district on the other side. Yeah. It's not. It's brilliant. Not, it's not great. It's not great. But when UAB gets their stadium built, it's going to be right there oh, at the entertainment district. Thank you. Um, Makes sense. They're going to share the stadium with the city, and hopefully folks will go. I hope they will, too. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if we actually made our picks. Um, A&M, A&M's going to cover 17. Uh, covering 17, so I also took A&M. So Sorry. let's see what happens. We'll talk about did next we agree? week. Did we agree on all No. Uh, well, I think we did. But, I think we did. That's, but that, the that, problem was the wrong. game. No, 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 no. Liberty. I took Liberty. Oh, you did. Okay. okay. I took Liberty. No, but... Uh, we we disagreed on the Oklahoma State and West Virginia. Yeah, though. But we both took. We're taking the. Yeah, but no, you so. made a. Oh, I think they're going to win. I think Oklahoma State's going to win. Yeah. yeah. So so you see that's the hook. Yeah. So if we somehow were to that's yeah. the other one. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Ken, thanks so much for stopping. Absolutely. By. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And where can folks find you? The website is chefubham dot com. The Instagram is at chefubham. On Facebook, it is chefu Birmingham. And we're going to link it down below. Uh, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or you're listening to us on the podcast, well, by the way, everybody, go download the podcast. You can listen to it in your car. You don't have to watch and let this face uh, make you wreck. Uh, but anyway, and, and pound that like button on uh, YouTube and share this, everything else. Uh, by the way, the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you can find good pod. So, Ken, man, thanks so much, man. Yeah, and you. watching your success has just been awesome. I mean, we're, to see somebody, I, I, and I, we talk about great entrepreneurs, it's fun watching somebody grow something. Yeah, yeah. it's been fun growing. It's been fun growing, for sure. And continuing to grow in the next year. And so give this guy a call. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. you'll really enjoy it. Thanks so much. We'll see you at next Thursday's uh, Thanksgiving. So we'll pro- we may come a day early, may come a day late, but we'll have a show next week. So, uh Have a great week. If I don't talk to you before, then happy Thanksgiving. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.